from Loretto Abbey, home to the Sisters of Loretto since 1928, and the Loretto Abbey Secondary School, and with the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. Welcome to this celebration of Daily TV Mass. My name is Father Bill Irwin. The televising of this Mass is made possible by a contribution from an anonymous donor from Toronto, Ontario. This Mass is offered in memory of her late husband, parents, brother Joe, and in-laws. For graces received, continued good health, for the daily TV Mass, and for peace in the world. We know that this television Mass brings meaning to the lives of tens of thousands of Canadians across our land. And they join with me in thanking our donor for this gift. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. Amen. Let us acknowledge our sins. So prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name. For you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Do not let sin exercise dominion in your mortal bodies to make you obey their passions. No longer present your members to sin as instruments of wickedness, but present the, yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and present your members to God as instruments of righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you since you are not under law, but under grace. What then? Should we sin because we are not under law, but under grace? By no means. Do not do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness? But thanks be to God that you, having once been slaves of sin, have overcome, have become obedient from the heart to the form of teaching to which you were entrusted, and that you, having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. The word of the Lord. is in the name of the Lord. Our help is in the name of the Lord. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, let Israel now say, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side when our enemies attacked us, 
Then they would have swallowed us up alive when their anger was kindled against us. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Then the flood would have swept us away the torrent would have gone over us. Then over us would have gone the raging waters. Blessed be the Lord, who has not given us as prey to their teeth. Our help is in have escaped like a bird from the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Our help is in Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Be watchful and ready. You know not when the Son of Man is coming. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to the disciples, Know this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not let his house be broken into. You must also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. Peter said, Lord, are you telling this parable for us or for everybody? The Lord said, who then is the faithful and prudent manager whom his master will put in charge of his slaves to give them their allowance of food at the proper time? Blessed is that slave whom the, his master will find at work when he arrives. Truly, I tell you, he will put that one in charge of all his possessions. But if that slave says to himself, my master is delayed in coming, and if he begins to beat the other slaves, men and women, to eat and drink and get drunk, the master of that slave will come on a day when he does not expect him and at an hour that he does not know, will cut him to pieces and put him with the unfaithful. That slave who knew what his master wanted, but did not prepare himself or do what was wanted, will receive a severe beating. The one who did not know and did what deserved a beating will receive a light beating. From everyone to whom much has been given, much will be required. And from the one who whom much has been entrusted, even more will be demanded. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise 
Jesus of Nazareth was a very good teacher. And a lot of it had to do with the way he could get people to answer their own questions. That's what the parables were all about. To get the people to answer their own questions by telling a story. The main example, I think, is the Good Samaritan. The scribe asks him, who is my neighbor? And Jesus knew it was the wrong question, so he didn't answer it. He told a story about three people, a priest, a Levite, and a Good Samaritan, and a Samaritan who went past an injured man, and he asked, who was neighbor to the injured man? And he said, the one who showed him mercy. So the man had found his own answer there, his own answer and the question that he should have been asking. Now today's gospel is a little more complicated. Jesus tells the story first. It doesn't sound much like a parable, but Peter says it's a parable, calls it a parable. And so uh, he tells the story of what would happen if the homeowner knew when the thief was coming. And certainly that he'd be ready for the thief. He knew when the thief was coming. And so he says, well, the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not know. Now, the funny thing is, Peter asked a question we don't expect. I mean, the obvious question is, what do you do when you don't know? But the question he asked, do you mean this for us or for everybody? That is, his disciples or for everybody? So he tells another story to get the question right. He tells a story about two people put in charge of their master's land, uh, possessions, and one of them, neither of them know when the master's coming, but the one of them does what he's expected to do, what he's required to do, and so the master comes and finds him doing what he should be doing. The other one, the way he, he doesn't know, but he says, well, I don't know, so uh, I can do things in the meantime, and he gets caught. So then Jesus says, to one, to one whom much is given, much will be expected. So he's saying to Peter, answer your own question. Is it meant for us or for everybody? It's meant for those who are given something. And it's, so whoever's given something from something is expected from, however much they're given. So the disciples certainly are being given a lot. You see, that's all, it's all common sense. Jesus is not kind of giving a lesson in something that's hard to understand or anything. He's just saying, everybody knows about expectations. <laughs> We've grown with expectation. We've lived with expectations since we were born. Life is all about what we expect of ourselves out of life and what we expect of other people and what they expect of us. Our parents' expectations, our family's expectations, our friends' expectations, our co-workers' expectations, our own society's expectations. What do they expect of us and our church's expectations? What does the church expect? Well, we know all about expectation. So when Jesus is talking about expectations, he's talking about something everybody knows about. So we have to start to ask the question, answer our own questions. What about it? What about expectations? That's where St. Paul comes in today. He picks it up. Because the question is, whose expectations do you want to meet? What are the expectations that you want to fulfill? And he says, you know, you had an old life, life of sin, and then the expectations you were suspected, expected to fulfill were the expectations of sin. It was a sinful life, so you were expected to live a sinful life and to do what sin told you to do. But Christ has given you a new life. So what is the life? What is the expectations? Now the expectation, 
Expectations are the life you've accepted from Jesus. Those are the expectations. He uses still master and slave, but later on he says, you know, it's not the life of slaves we're living now. It's the life of children. If we were slaves, we've been adopted into the family. We're part of the family now. And that's the expectations we just are trying to live up to because it's a great life if we only live up to it. But the other question is still not answered. <laughs> what do we do if we don't know to get prepared for what we don't know, for when it's coming? And again, that's a part of human life. You know, the funny thing is we really wish we could live life all at once. We could say, I'm going to follow Christ, I'm going to be the disciple of Christ, and that was it. We wake up every morning, <laughs> and there are the expectations still be fulfilled. And we have to live them and live them and live them. Sometimes it gets tiring. St. Paul says in another place, don't get tired of doing good. Don't get tired of doing right. And it is sometimes tiring. All we have to do, that's what Jesus wants us to find in that parable. All we have to do is keep doing what Jesus did. God first, other people second, ourselves last. If something catches us by surprise, if we're doing that, we're okay. If we're doing that, we're okay. And there's always forgiveness there. False step, we can get back. And if we go to the Eucharist every day, we come again to the one who is feeding us on the way and forgiving us on the way and who wants us to succeed. Let's take a moment now for those intentions we wish to pray for at this Eucharist. Let us pray first of all for the church throughout the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray for all the peoples of the earth, for peace and justice. Let us pray to the Lord. And let us pray for our daily mass community, TV mass community that each of us will do a little something every day to help change the world and make it a better place. We pray to the Lord. Lord Most merciful and gracious God, hear these prayers and answer them in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Yes, God. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord. May our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, Lord, from my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. My brothers and sisters, please pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, and grant that, cleansed by its action, we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord. Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, 
through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love, his resurrection we confess with living faith, and his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Thomas our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, Today is the Feast of St. Luke, or last week at this time. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, 
that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, but worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Christ. Will those of you at home please join me now in this prayer from Sacred Scripture, Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change, though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumult. Let us pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. And thanks to God. Our thanks to our donor for the gift of this Mass. Please remember that all requests for prayers are included in our Prayer Intentions book and shared with all of our celebrants. Who did on the cross forsaken show us mercy's perfect deed? We, your servants, bring the worship not a voice of